Uh, good morning, students. Uh, today we are entering the 19th day of our uh, list and workshop. Uh, today, for the first session with us, we have Dr. Ajay Kumar Marato. He's a staff scientist three at uh, Center for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostics, uh, Hyderabad, Telangana. Uh, he has a PhD in bioinformatics from uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University, Lucknow. And uh, MSc and B MSc bioinformatics from Chaudhary Charan Singh University, Meerut, and a uh, botany honors from University of Delhi. He uh, worked as a research associate from 2016 to uh, sorry, to, uh, to, sorry 2006 to uh, 2019 at the National Research Center for Biotechnology, in New Delhi. Uh, his research in interest, uh, he has uh, 13 years of research experience in the field of bioinformatics, especially in genome assembly of Sanger, NGS, and SMRT sequencing data. Uh, he has worked in two international consortium projects from Indian side, uh, International Wheat Genome Sequencing Consortium and uh, SOL Genomics Network, and has worked as a lead bioinformati bioinformatician to assemble wheat and tomato genomes. Apart from that, he has worked uh, in uh, assembling, assembled more than five draft genome and uh, like mango, PGMP, jute, coconut, magna porte, oriza, and two reference level mango and PGMP genomes and performed further annotations and other downstream analysis. He has uh, also received several awards and honors like an investigator for the Outstanding contribution to the field of bioinformatics at the fourth international conference on innovative approaches in applied science and technology from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, Serb Young Scientist International Travel Support uh, two times, uh, 2013 and 2015. Uh, he has a total of uh, 44 publications with a H index of uh, 17. So, with this uh, short uh, introduction, I invite uh, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Mahato to deliver that talk. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you so much, Ram, uh, for uh, such a nice introduction. And uh, especially, um, first of all, I would like to thanks like Dr. Morgan and all all the uh, organizers of of uh, this, uh, this this particular event, and especially especially for uh, invi inviting me uh, here to talk about the future science domain, which is like bioinformatics, with uh, our like a uh, of future scholars, scient or future innovators, or scientists. So um, uh, that's it. So uh, the another thing is that uh, now, if you see the bioinformatics point of view, like uh, so, there are students who have joined on this session, especially, and this is especially for the students. So the the future is going to be on like a very data centric and very inf uh, in informatic space. So today I'm going to talk about like uh, about the bioinformatics and the several application, including uh, the myth and uh, like what, what, what are the realities there uh, so that the student can get a, a better clarity on bioinformatics part. Thank you. Shall I start my talk? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay, let me share my screen. Just give me a second. Me share a link.
Uh, yeah, I'm ready uh, with my step. So, is it coming? Ah, uh, yes, doctor. Uh, now, yes. Uh, now it is fine. Yes, good doctor. Thanks. Proceed. Uh, just wait. Uh, just give me a sec so that I can stop my video. So, like those who have like a poor connect, uh, like a low internet bandwidth, they can also. Be. So I'm going to stop my video. Okay. So very good morning to all of you. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the, uh, the fundamentals of bioinformatics, which mainly focus on like tools and uh, databases under this BRAC, Sitare and BIS program organized by this SRISTI. So actually uh, here in my C in CDFD, uh, I have my independent lab called the Laboratory of Genome Informatics, who's, uh, which, which is mainly focused on the area of bioinformatics, especially genomics and uh, artificial intelligence, deep learning and machine learning. So. So, uh, so this is my talk outline. Like uh, I'll give you about introduction about the history and what are the bioinformatics technique, right? Which is widely used, globally used since the inception of uh, this uh, this this uh, domain. And uh, especially, I'm going to focus on the bioinformatics, especially in agriculture. And uh, the 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 last, I'm going to talk about what are the myths and facts about the bioinformatics so that student will get the clear understanding. So as you know, like uh, if somebody tell what is bioinformatics? So, so it's a, basically it's a two word. It's amalgamation of bio plus informatics. So bio means biology part. Informatics is like uh, the computi uh, computi computational part, part. So we can say it's a marriage uh, between uh, uh, the computer science and the uh, bi biotechnology or molecular biology. But, but the uh, but the beauty is like we are we are we are using this uh, biotechnology uh, knowledge and the data set or like uh, the observations uh, to draw some uh, innovative conclusion using software like computer science and the software is basically based on the algorithm, so it is used to solve the problem faced by molecular biologists using uh, the algorithms and technique of computer science. So, so application area. So let's say if you see this cartoon, so there are n number of application area you can see like uh, because uh, the informatics, like it, it started in, in early in, in 1978 uh, sort of thing, where like the first uh, comparative uh, algorithm was developed. So it has like, uh, it used for like genome, genome analysis, right? like everyone is now familiar with the coronavirus and all those in this pandemic. And they are much aware about the variants and the genome sequencing or the anti-genome uh, statistics. It is also useful in like evolutionary study. So using bioinformatics uh, tools and approaches, you can you can uh, you can clearly uh, uh, predict the evolutionary uh, relationship among different uh, different organism, whether it's a, a microorganism or uh, the clad of different plants or or or, 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 or any other taxa. So that is purely based on the evolutionary. So bioinformatics is also another domain which is specifically based on the algorithm development, and that biological algorithm can uh, is used to address uh, a new biological problem, which will further translate into the software. So you all are aware, like uh, there are a number of software which is coming every day. Like uh, I hope you 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 as a student, you guys are aware of about like BLAST and the multiple sequence alignment sort of thing. So. So BLAST is a tool, but the multiple sequence or similarity sequence is an algorithm, right? So it is used widely used for the statistic analysis and it is also used for this uh, database development. And uh, yes, uh, 
Pre genomic AI, it is widely used for the drug designing, and 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 currently also it is it is used for the identification of lead molecule of certain drugs. So this picture is another a depiction like uh, how uh, this bioinformatics is making a bridge between the evolutionary science, animal science, computer science, which includes statistics, mathematics, like uh, pathology and the biochemistry and uh, molecular biology. So. The bioinformatics is a bridge which which is connecting all the domains. So initially, like this, uh, these like uh, the five domains, like what I have shown in this picture, they are they are independently existing. But using this IT and uh, uh, IT IT knowledge and uh, bio biological uh, uh, algorithms, the bioinformatics can it is able to merge and uh, merge those five fields into one. And as an output, as an output, the 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 double the innovation of new information or, or any product development is very rapid. So that because for any problem you 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 have a the support from a different uh, different aspect. Like if I'm talking about an evolutionary study, so let's say if I'm uh, so it is backed by the sequence, it is backed by the statistical bit score, like uh, and the bootstrapping value, other thing. So by this way, the bioinformatics is a, a building bridge, uh, bridge. Now, this is also uh, a, a pictorial diagram. So why why I am put three slides for this to make and understand what is bioinformatics? Because um, as a student, uh, as a student, this uh, because uh, many of you are some of uh, are from computer science, some of you are chemistry, bio, biology, or statistics, engineering, etc. But you know, like bioinformatics is is able to uh, able to, and it is it is widely used in all the domains. Maybe you are not aware. And let's say if you are a mathematician, so using bioinformatics, uh, so using bioinformatics, you you, you can get uh, you can uh, uh, get in touch or interact with all other science like biology, like let's say if you develop some algorithm or some calculation like statistic, chemistry, computer science and engineering. So in this way, uh, it is a field in which, you know, biology, computer science are merged into form a single discipline. And uh, like this, uh, this uh, definition, which I have quoted, it is from the NCBI, right? Uh, now next. So let me, uh, I hope I hope you, you uh, this uh, eight, eight, oh wait, wait. yeah no, this is okay so and uh, let's say biology and computer science is amalgamated to do the database curation network biology and data analysis this these days data analysis or data science is on boom Okay, and uh, uh, most of the thing is is going to be digital. So bioinformatics is a future of, of uh, it's a it's a future uh, science or or you can say uh, say a pillar which which support all all domain of science. So coming to the uh, what a bioinformatician is. So let's say uh, in this uh, a biologist. Who collect a data a molecular data like sequence or uh, any gene expression or any phenotypic data, and a computer science like a scientist like mathematician statistician. So they generally develop some uh, algorithm and that algorithm translate into software. So so the software is publicly available and the biological data is available uh, with the biologist. Now now this. Uh, the role of bioinformatician is to make use of those algorithm or uh, develop new tool or software to analyze the biology the, this biologist data and draw draw uh, a new or uh, informative conclusion about the data and report to the biologist so it by doing so it will it will save the time as well as it will it will uh, save the resources also so I'll, I'll give you one one example right so let's say human genome if, if you talk about the human genome so it take like seven years to decode that genome but after the genome is available 
now this there, there is a there is a rapid uh, growth in 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 terms of uh, the new innovation or new information uh, what you are getting right like uh, identification of causal gene or variant up to like some rare genetic diseases until date like that 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 resource that data that uh, that its genome is is a is a gold mine and people are working widely so by this way a bioinformatician uh, role is very important in a lab or in an institute or in an academy also so biotechnology is is you can say um, a technology or it or it is as a method so as a technology like uh, as a bioinformatician you use uh, the to you it used to manage like the huge volume of data like this gen, gen, next generation sequencing data because earlier the sanger data uh, size is very less but in this in this era in the in the era of like next generation sequencing so there are several uh, there are uh, two major platform like illumina uh, and the pacbio and nanopore but the the short read sequencer like illumina this machine a new machine nova seq it generate like Six to eight uh, GB of the uh, no TB of date sequence data. So you can imagine, in one run, you are able to get of uh, the data of six to eight terabyte. So the volume is very high. So as a technology, a, band, a, a bioinformatics or a bioinformatician role is to store and, and store and manage that huge volume of data in a structured manner, right? And as a as a uh, and if I talk about the methodology, the bioinformatic is basically a top-down approach. So by using this uh, data, we, uh, the uh, bioinformatician can uh, can do many things like the comparative analysis, genome-wide identification, some fat uh, pattern matching discovery, or some and uh, or like identification of uh, function elements. So. This diagram show as a bioinformatics as a technology. So let's say uh, how how it is become a technology. So the genotype and a phenotype, right? So we say like genotype means uh, the DNA or a genome which translate to RNA, protein, and uh, molecule network, cell, and the like. Uh, it ex and 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 it, and it it shows like uh, the phenotypic expression, whether like in diseases or or other expression. But so let's say if as a, so i'm talking about a technology so let's say if a genotype like if you have a genome so bioinformatics is used for the uh, that uh, assembly of genome identification of uh, the new gene it is useful for the and used for the comparative genome analysis so let's say if you want to compare about like uh, how a mouse genome uh, is related with like other uh, human genome on the tiger genome and other and and other uh, other uh, related species like uh, uh, any bird so bioinformatics can uh, able to address that problem and it is very useful and highly useful for this evolution data analysis by by uh, in which you know uh, using the a certain group of genes which are single copy across the uh, genome or across the genera you can able to identify how uh, like how many millions year ago those genes are evolved uh, from one species and it will transfer uh, it will transfer to another species or uh, you can say another clad in terms of rna let's say if you have rna so it is used for like the uh, motif identification or the gene so you know what is motif so it's a functional part of protein so you can identify if, if that motif contains in this protein then only it is going to perform that function and rna level it is also used for the identification of differential gene expression so now, now these is uh, earlier the the the, uh, the the gene expression is used widely used, uh, uh, analyzed using the microarray, but this uh, RNA sec or sequencing technology has uh, changed that thing, and people are using only RNA uh, for this differential in RNA sec data. In terms of protein, bioinformatics, a bioinformatics or a bioinformatician role is to do this uh, data identification, basic if it is a mass spec data. And second, like the structure prediction and structure alignment. So this structure prediction is very useful in the pharmaceutical industry because uh, uh, because once uh, uh, this uh, this uh, structural modeling or like the structural biology part is another domain. We deal with the uh, identification of lead molecule or a new drug molecule against certain 
a certain uh, disease which is caused by a, a, a certain gene. So at the protein level also, uh, a bioinformatics is a huge application. Now let's say if, if you want to study at molecular network level, it has a huge applications like metabolic uh, single net, uh, like uh, identify the metabolic pathway, like the, the like signaling network, etc. And and as a phenotype. So let's say if you have a phenotype data, you 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 can uh, bioinformatics can able to address in the population genetics and identification of this. Uh, if you, uh, the genome wide association analysis. So by in this way, you, you can see as a technology, bioinformatics is everywhere, right? From genotype to phenotype, it is everywhere. Uh, so as an approach, so let's say if, uh, if uh, uh, so this diagram uh, is uh, just depicting how as an approach you can say by, so let's say above, uh, you have a biological question right for you generate a data then uh, this uh, the data will uh, translate into computer to uh, and or using the software to to address so let's say if that that problem is new and its software is not available then a role of man, man, mathematician come who develop an algorithm implement an algorithm and run and after the and and a new software or script can uh, uh, develop which will address uh, which will address this biological problem using the generated data. For example, let's say uh, a gene, uh, uh, a certain process is regulated by a protein X, right? So, so Abalis will, uh, so he generated some chip check data and then uh, using softwares like, and the, he, the data is along with, with him. Now, uh, the role of bioinformatics starts here. So the band, the bioinformatics or a bioinformatician will take the data, align uh, this uh, uh, cluster, uh, this reads to the genome, and and uh, if uh, if that uh, that uh, algorithm it is not structured way, so it write uh, an automated uh, source code which can align these huge number of reads and uh, whatever, uh, and it will summarize the data in terms of the tables, figures, and any any other uh let's say image and then it is report to the uh this uh to to the to to, to the person who 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 is who, who has developed this data so in this way bioinformatics is very useful so this is uh, about a, a methodology so bioinformatics so that is an application part and this as a methodology is basically like a, a, a manage, uh, management part so everybody, uh, I hope uh, like everyone is know what is a database because everybody is using this Google and uh, like uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to let's say listen some song, so you, if you have an, uh, an app, you, you will just make a search. So the search, whatever query you are, uh, you are just uh, entering, it is, it search that information into uh, a big, a big uh, room, you can say where that is sitting. So that is called a database. And then it report if that that uh, that information or that song is available, and you listen to it. So it is widely used for the data management, and uh, I hope uh, this data management, you know, in this coming era, in this era, particular uh, like uh, in this uh, uh, coming, uh, I hope ten to fifteen years is very important because everything is now automate uh, moving towards the automation, and informatics going to play a major role. So if I say earlier the sequencing, Sanger sequencing, you have to, you need like four four different lab. One is like for uh, uh, a cloning lab, a physical map uh, mapping lab. So the physical mapping lab uh, just uh, they they identify some bags. The cloning lab will uh, do the cloning of those bags. Now the sequencing lab will do this uh, Sanger uh, this sequencing part, and the bioinformatics will do the alignment and the quality check. So that is a very complex process, and uh, you know that. Uh, so uh, using that approach, this rice genome and the human genome was developed. But and but and it has taken like more than five years, or more than uh, ten to uh, ten to twelve years to to get that that uh, that uh, genome. But in this era, everything is now got automated. So if if you if you know like uh, the sequ the sequencing machine called the uh, nanopore. So nanopore is just like uh, uh, is, is just like uh, twice the length of the uh, a pen drive, right? 
and uh, where uh, you can directly plug it, uh, it it has a usb port you can plug into your computer whether it's a mac or the windows and just uh, and uh, you have to just uh, uh, provide the uh, the 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 library uh, you have created uh, on that uh, on that uh, cell or the flow cell and just you have to run it so it generate data in real time means in real time you can see atgc atgc and it store the data on your system right so by this way this data management is very important so that that, that is one thing second thing i have always spoken like about the lumina sequencing so this uh, this this latest machine they generate like on one run to uh, six to eight tb of data so that date the huge volume of data management is on another domain so let's say if somebody is interested in databases and uh, he he's from bioinformatics background and he, if he he like to develop uh, go make his career into the database field yes uh, he has a huge opportunity in in in, in this in this particular uh, domain uh, because so the the database is now become older now there is a, a data the concept called uh, uh, uh data lake right so it's it's a uh, it's a huge thing and uh finally like uh you you can see uh a data ocean digital data ocean so that that uh that uh, field is coming up and it is it is widely used uh now as because the the amount enormous amount of data is generated and i'll just give you one example the basic example like in this pandemic you see every country of the entire world they are sequencing the genome of that uh, that coronavirus right and every day like in cdfd every day we are sequencing like some uh, thousand to two to two thousand samples right at the genome level which uh, which we got from uh, all across the uh, uh, india and but especially uh, the major portion is from uh, this our uh, telangana state so the management is also very important the second part is as a methodology is data computation. So let's say in bioinformatics, you know, it's a bio plus informatics. So you will learn like uh, the the full understanding of bio plus all the uh, informatics uh, knowledge, right? So in, in so in informatics knowledge comes like data management, like uh, how you can uh, write an algorithm like in Python, Perl. So these days, if you search on Python jobs, let's say uh, if you say like Python job, so it's a huge, huge uh, gap between a supply and a demand. The demand is very, very large, but the supply is very, very low. So if anyone, like if a bioinformatician is interested in that particular, uh, he's good in programming, so he, he will he'll opt, opt to this career and uh, like software algorithm tools and web, web server. And you know, uh, like really I'm, I'm going, uh, I'm talking about like, uh, in this as a technology or as a methodology if you're switching your career in a private company or mmnc company because uh, two of my students now they got selected in, into into just uh, into two uh, mnc company right and uh, initial package if i talking about is like uh, 12 to 15 lakh right one is in data management another one is like in uh, in these data mining and the data computation the third domain is data simulation in which you predict the model. So this here, this domain, so it is widely uh, useful for the drug discovery. So anyone who is interested in the in the structural biology part, so this uh, so this this particular methodology, if he has an expertise, so so there, there is a no uh, uh, scarcity of job in this in this particular domain. So I'm not uh, so cutting short. So this the first protein sequence, as you know, is, is was uh, insulin, in which is uh, 51 uh, residue long, and uh, it was sequenced in 1956. And uh, yeast uh, rtRNA sequence was reported, which is like 77 bases long. So this is the origin of biological database. So so let's say th that is a data like 51 uh, uh, residue and the 77 uh, this 51 amino acid and this this 77 uh, nucleotide. Now to you know like for uh, in 1965. Uh, so Dehoff. So if you say like who is the father of uh, bioinformatics? So Dehoff is the father of bioinformatics. 
So he gathered all the available sequence and created the uh, the first uh, database, uh, which is called like the uh, uh, Atlas of Protein Sequence, which is these days it is used uh, known as a Swiss prot, right? So it started with uh, the collection of 10, uh, 10 uh, X-ray crystallography protein structure in 1972. But right now, Swiss prot is like it contain like millions to, to billions of sequence information. So it's a database. So it's, so database is basically to store the information so that it can be available globally for for any researcher to to use that information for uh, discovery of new uh, new new things or like understanding the basic behind any a problem so this is the bio uh, history about like how uh, started i'm not going to talk much because due to time scarcity so but uh, but i can i can just show you so it started in and in, uh, in in the late 1950 and uh, the boom comes in 2000 after 2013 once the ngs is introduced now the main ingredient so this is all about like what is a uh, what is bioinformatics how the bioinformatics is as a work as a methodology and as a you can say like as in career let's say if you are planning to to opt it and whether it is a good choice for you to opt for this bioinformatics course or not so i have shown you uh, like uh, everything like future is going to be digital and just write one thing so i would like to tell you one uh, just just search the uh, uh, just write a domain called earth bio genome project so kindly visit that site uh, like like uh, i forget to include that page so this earth bio genome project you know it is the world biggest project with whose aim is to sequence entire eukaryotic species all the eukaryotic species existing in this earth so the, uh, so they are going to sequence and it's a worldwide collaboration india is also the partner uh, and uh, you just see that site so and it is 20 years long project and uh, the data I'm, if i'm talking about the data so the five years is dedicated uh, for this uh, data just like making connections and the data which is out coming is like some 100 uh, some 300 petaflop so it is one of, it is the next leap you can say the biggest step uh, change for the humanity after uh, this uh, landing of the human foot on on moon and it is going to change entire thing understanding about the all the whatever phylogeny we are studying right now no? so it is going to entirely change so that is a so i'm just emphasize why uh, this informatics if you choose as a career and if you choose an interest is is uh, the future one so now so let's say uh just like uh sorry so just like uh let's say uh i'm making a tea you have an ingredient uh, you, you you need some ingredient right okay so so i'm just uh talking about the main ingredient of this bioinformatics so the data right are uh a lot of data or only data is a main ingredient of uh, this uh, uh, bioinformatics right and to store the data what we need a database right so the uh, so if anyone is very much in, uh, interested in developing a database yes so the major goal is to just collect the whatever information is coming from any aspect i'm not talking about the sequencing part so let's say if you are if you are going in, in like a proteomics if you are dealing with a microarray so all data should be should be should be stored but the storing is not uh, on a high, half as hard manner right it should be a, in a structured way and the structure way is uh, of storing the information in a digital format called the databases so data then databases now you can say database or a data bank right so basically uh, initially the data bank in, in uk they 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 they, they used to they, they have given a term like a data bank later in us it is become database 
Now the solution is like the abbreviation we have given is DB, right? Now, what is a database? So it's basically a collection of, I was told like a structured collection of a related data, right? Using a computer uh, on, on, on digital, like on a hard drive. Now everybody understand hard drive, okay? Right, or, or a storage media, right? And uh, without uh, without the uh, redundancy. So the redundancy terms means duplication of data, right? So uh, as I told you, like uh, it's a, it's a structured arrangement or structured storing. So the the duplicacy of data is not going to exist because if data is duplicated, whatever conclusion you are going to draw using that information. Uh, drawn from this database uh, any database is going to be uh, wrong right and a single database i can say let's say if you make a database of uh, let's say you uh, uh, the uh, the the basal uh, transcriptome basal means tulsi so anyone has created a database of tulsi transcriptome which contain its sequence right and uh, or it's uh, the transcript information sequence its annotation and its which pathway it belong and along with a marker, right? So, so, so the database is single, but its application is numerous. So let's say if I want to perform moment similarity search, so I can use the sequence. If somebody interested in just identify in identify and gene and to in another plant, so as already primer sequence is available, they have to just synthesize and just get it run in the wet lab. So a database gives you a uh, opportunity to use it for for uh, for using same data for in, in in multiple way and it provide an option for retrieving uh, retrieving as a query like everybody is is using google or anything like uh, insacog or any database so you are aware now a database is a structured searchable and a, a cross reference uh, collection of data which where the data basically stored in a uh, relational manner and a flat file format. Now, why biological database? So the, the question arises, okay, okay, database is fine, but why biological database is needed? Uh, so as I already uh, told you that the future, the, the day by day, the data is, uh, the generation of biological data is is huge, huge. Now to store the uh, store the data and the and uh, that large data set and making uh, making searchable is the need uh, is is a main reason for uh, need of a biological database so that this data is available to the scientists not to at one uh, who is not to a particular region or a particular lab but it is accessible and or it is available to globally to all uh, to all the all the community everyone is now i know everyone is known about the ncbi so so what is an ncbi right ncbi is a biological database but inside the ncbi there is there are structured several different databases small databases like pubmed for publication like uh, and uh, uh, that uh, uh, blast feature for similarity search uh, like for uh, a genome data, so where you can search only about the genome, a gene database. So there are SSR database, okay? So which contain the biological information and many of you have used the, that um, NCBI to, to or EMBL or EBI to extract any biological information, right? So that so this is the two major region. one like the large volume of data and, and in uh, to store large volume of data in structured manner as second to make it available globally to to all uh, to all, all all scientific community now i'm as this is especially uh, to talk on the bioinformatics and especially uh, this bio plus informatics so in terms of biological database, there are different classes, right? So I have just listed few one like the nuclear database sequence, like the protein sequence database, uh, pattern motif, 3D structure like PDB, gene expression like 
gene expression omni bus where you 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 are able to get the gene expression data set and microarray data set keg is a data uh, base uh, which deal with the uh, metabolic pathways for mass spectrometry data ncbi uh, ncbi is is having uh, this data and let's say if you are focusing on clinical aspect the database called clinvar which contain the already the mutational snp information on uh, gene wise so let's say if you have if you sequence a gene and uh, uh, you just uh, did a uh, you find out like this is the snp in your gene you can just refer to that database and you come to know if if this snp is there in that gene it is going to cause like some uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, disease like uh, diabetes or, or or some neurological disorder so there are there are there are many uh, types of biological database but the six are the majorly widely used uh, type of uh, biological database now we now we can classify this database into three like primary secondary and tertiary primary is where you have directly uh, deposited the the raw data secondary where the result of the uh, that primary data is stored and uh, the third one is where we are aggregating multiple database into a single one like a ncbi so classification like uh, as i saw it should be available to public uh, and but without any without any hindrance with no copyright and the data should be downloadable it should be free right so the database should uh, availability should be ensured now, so this slide contains the category of database for life sciences. So as I have already spoken in my previous time, I'm not going to talk, but yes, there are independent database for each of the data sets. So, so now, this, now there are a few slides and now these slides will tell you like uh, giving you example of a primary database. So let's say if I talk about the primary database where only the raw data is, is uh, submitted. It's not the sequence data, but it could be a, a metabolomic data or it could be a, a genotyping data. So let's say uh, the nucleotide data or let's say, so there are database called NCBI, GenBank, EMBL, DDBJ, if you're protein, so CISPRO, Tremble and other. So these are the primary database which contain only the, the raw data. Now, um, you can you can search this ncbi using this tool called enters you just have to give the keyword and let's say if you want to search a protein about amylase and just go so it will it will put forth it it will show you all the data protein sequences which is related to amylase so the slide is is a basically uh an, an overview how you can you how you are going to make a query so that i have already so the this slide basically contain the uh, the link or you can say the addresses of the, those major databases and these th three databases are the world biggest database and uh, i forget to include one slide now um, you know uh, to make all uh, aware uh, and uh, it, it is already asked in in several ias in, in interviews so India is already uh, developing its own biological database like NCBI and its name is Indian Biological Data Archive. Okay. And it is an initiative which is, uh, which was, which was funded by Department of Biotechnology, Government of India and uh, this uh, de uh, Department of Information Technology. So, uh, Sorry, I, I, I just forget to add that one, but it is going to be a national pride, right? So it is a one step ahead in, in making, uh, making us not depend on like the US or, uh, or other countries to just deposit our data and get just seek that accession number uh, so that we can quote it in a publication, right? So it is a it is a it, uh, what I can say it, it is a move it is a it is a welcome move by DBT and government of India or especially like uh, uh, this uh, for making India as an Atmanirbhar Bharat right because we never know when when US will say okay I'm going we are going to charge for this data deposition and that database uh, ID IBD uh, DC is free free for everyone. 
so i see so ncb just like ncbi na it contain currently it contain 39 total different databases and this is the list of databases so literature database so you are aware of about pubmed right but apart from that there are other four databases also where you can search right or let's a book you can search in the book ncbi books database for gene so let's say you 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 uh, it has a gene a database called gene where you collect about the gene locus but other database like the est which contain information about express sequence tag so what is express se sequence tag so basically it's a tr transcript of a gene so est est doesn't contain any uh, in intron it contain only exon but the gene contain full length uh, uh, full length like exon intron 5 prime and 3 prime oh might be uh, okay so this is the database so uh, india is also planning to develop uh, a uh, and it, uh, it has started also and uh, the the major thing like there is an uh, a policy which is coming and uh, which is called the bio, uh, biotech pride policy right and uh, you can download that policy from the department of biotechnology's uh, website i i i just uh, i just insist all the students and even the faculty to just just uh, just have a view or have a, just go through that uh, that guideline it is very very important and it is necessary if you are applying for any dbt or any dst or any csir uh, project so you have to sign that biotech pride guideline so it's a basically pride means promotion of research and innovation through data exchange so where everyone like whatever uh, research we are doing it is from the public money it is from your money public fund so the goal is to uh, make all the data in a, in in a centralized place so that everybody can use uh, the data in 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 different fashion or different manner so that so that that one is a good move by department of biotechnology so i'm not going to talk, talk much about the type of databases okay ddb just stand for dd indian data bank uh, bank of japan now the coming on the protein sequence uh, uh, pdb swiss plot tremble they are the different protein databases you you can have a google search and you will know about it and structure there are a number of structured database but but pdb uh, this msd and ndb is widely used dal is also a good database this example of literature database like pubmed pubsem central omem i have already told you this is basically a a just uh, front page of ncbi where you can do a search like pubmed medline medline is specifically for the medicine okay so where you where you can you you can do the simple search and just get the information you can download if that that if let's say if that paper is free it will, you will get a free download you can directly download from here only you don't need to go to the journal website so so there are uh, for the plant especially the the, the database called tear the arodos uh, thaliana information resource so it is the first uh, plant you know which got sequenced and it is widely used as a reference model plant for higher uh, for uh, is it is using it is widely used for as a model plant there are other databases called called keg and gencart so it's, it's so basically these are the you know, now the coming to the next thing, thing is like a format right so you know like you all are aware of like uh, mp4 format for video mp3 is for like uh, music same the uh, different data data there is a, a format called fasta fastq pir and cluster so fasta is basically for sequence fastq is generated by the and, uh, sequencing machine protein is for like for the uh, sequence format but it is less used so widely used format is fasta file format and so it's okay so uh, initially the this raw raw story file format was used which is translated into the fasta file which is widely used these days uh, for for the sequence and and coming about the fastq fastq file is is generated from the sequencing machine which contain the base information as well as this quality value so this a is having something quality but the quality value in a sky character so i know i hope like uh, the people for computer science students they know what is sky characters and this this is a special format like a genbank file format where you can see this header it contain the detail about uh, that in, that's that uh, data 
the feature table means let's say if it if it is a gene so if how much this uh, gene size where where is exon and what are the protein uh, translated protein and the final it sequence similarly for embl so it's, it's a different file format so multiple sequence alignment format is widely used for uh, the alignment of uh, multiple sequence to find out the SNPs and uh, to draw uh, the phylogenetic relationship. So this is an example where you can clearly see uh, like the gap, the, this dash denoted a gap. So this MIC aligned FASTA format. So this so this slide is an um, uh, show the multiple sequence alignment format generated by the cluster software called cluster, which is widely used and one of the oldest cluster. Here you can see like uh, you are uh, they, they are comparing mouse, rat, uh, human and oasis areas, uh, this sequence. And after multiple sequence alignment, you come to know like, okay, this gene, uh, this particular region is uh, is only existing in mouse. And uh, from here, let's so, so from methionine, you will see everything is conserved. But here, uh, in, in, in terms of I, the, the surat and mouse contain like the, the well well. In. So, and there is a deletion or you can say addition in these three sequence. So, this multiple sequence alignment give you this, uh, this variant information, not the SNP, but also the indels using the sequence data. So, you, you can use the protein as well as the uh, nucleotide sequence data also, which is commonly used. Now, the backbone of uh, bioinformatics, you know, the backbone of bioinformatics is what? It's only sequence similarity, whatever thing like any, any bioinformatician does, whether it's a, a genome assembly or genome uh, or like a SNP identification or uh, GWAS analysis, or you, or you can say phylogenetic analysis, evolutionary analysis, uh, structure prediction, everything is based on the sequence similarity on the basis so let's say if two sequences are uh, are very much identical with each other it's known fact that they perform the same function but this alignment is is basically algorithm based so so the initial one is like people use dot plots to just align the two two sequence with each other so let's say if this is an example uh, we have one sequence one sequence two so if hh one is hh is common you put text so you you got the match here you 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 don't got the match like al similarly for k and t no match right but for p and p you got match so p and p is a match so the, so this is the dot, dot plot but uh, but this has expedited using uh, this new algorithm called uh, this basic local alignment search tool uh, which now the easiest people are widely using and it's very common. So this application area of bioinformatics, especially like genomics, you can say like decoding of genome, like future predictions, marker discovery, which is which is very, very important in the ASS, like quality. Here we have a PETA center and we give a certification of all the import, export, uh, all the what are the uh, all the Vasmati rice which is exported from India to, to globe. So this marker are very important in terms of proteomics that it is useful application area like uh, duct designing and structural modeling system biology you can find out the let's say if any gene is involved in pathways important pathway and in phenotype you can do the image analysis using image analysis you will do the uh, like cutel identification and GWAR. so there is a huge application of bioinformatics in every uh, in i can say every uh, every uh, every domain of biology so this is an application of phylogenetics. So this is the phylogenetic tree. You can see A, B, C, D, E. So, so there is a root and these uh, six sequences are related with each other, but sequence A and sequence B, they are most recent and they, and of, uh, they, are, they are related and they are most, uh, they are common in sister of A and B. So in this way, you can draw conclusion using uh, uh, N number of sequences. As now, the computational resource is not, not, not a problem. Now, come, oh, uh, still five minutes are left. So, so uh, I'm just uh, end of my uh, talk, but uh, I just want to clear like few myth about like everybody, um, people are like, the first myth is that bioinformatics, like assumption is bioinformatics is very easy, right? So it's simple, a GUI based application and user have to put and draw the data. No, that is not a, a, a real thing, right? The answer is, answer is, let's say anyone, anyone, so let's say anyone can use like a predefined analysis using the web, web page application. 
but let's say if, if certain new 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 problem uh, is you have a data set and you want to get it analyzed in a new way so yeah so so uh, for that analysis you new algorithm should be written and it should be customized as per the as per the, the data set so where the important of that ban permutations come so it's not ban is not not simple like anybody can do it required uh, uh, your algorithm understanding, your basic biology understanding, your programming skills, your interpretation, your statistical skills, right? Now, everybody thought, okay, assumption is that bioinformatics merely, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a service, right? And it support like expendable research uh, that can be uh, a disconnected service. But traditionally, it's a uh, biology like hypothesis, you design ex, uh, an experiment, uh, an experiment, you perform experiment, you just eyeballing an evolution, and if that is not, you again uh, just go to this. Now, this uh, high throughput assumption, you can say in the bioinformatics role is here. So, this basically in this part where you have an experiment and you have a data set, right? And the bioinformatics is going to uh, going to help in this uh, data set to get it analyzed to draw a, a conclusive information so that to minimize the time. Uh, to, to minimize the time uh, for for the for the discovery okay so this is the reality like interdisciplinary so it's basically it's not a, a, a service but it is an interdisciplinary domain right which require a team throughput so the last myth is like bioinformatics is very quick now <laughs> uh like uh as 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 uh as uh, uh i i am in this uh, i have started my career in 2006 right and uh there in that time this uh this uh competition resource is very limited even 2 gb ram is wow the system is very very powerful and assumption these is also like band is very quick because due to the availability of hardware and all those things but that is wrong that that is wrong okay why because only computer like uh, if uh, so there is a concept called gigo in computer science garbage in garbage out if if the data is not properly sorted not filtered and if you put into any software it will give the wrong result right so bioinformatics is faster than manual work but but to but for analysis it is it is a time taking process right and you know, like the, I can, I means I'm, I have, I am in this domain to in past 15 years now. And uh, like a wet lab experiment, uh, like a wet lab people with the design experiment, perform the uh, dry run and set the parameters. And then they, they, they just uh, draw some conclusion. Similarly, like one software cannot run. Uh, so one software ca cannot able to add, uh, give uh, result uh, on, on different data set, right? So we have to optimize that particular software value according to the different data set. So it's anybody can do the same. No assumption is this, but no three things to remember, like band format is required a decade, a dedication and a continuity. It's a full uh, data analysis, a full research experiment in itself. So we have to standardize the parameters and everything of a software, or if needed, new software is considered written. And we get most of our research if we work in an interdisciplinary manner. So basically, it's a it's a, it's an interdisciplinary field. So by this, I'm just stopping my talk. And thank you so much for your kind uh, kind patience and attention. And one thing I can say, the bioinformatics is is just for kid. Uh, uh, it's not is not for kid right it's uh it's, it's it's for scientists thank you so much for your kind attention thank you if you have any question i would i'm happy to to answer it yeah thank you dr Raja. Uh, the session is open for discussions if you need any clarifications you can ask doctor huh? Any questions, students?
okay if 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 they don't have any question right uh, i i just like to tell uh, uh, one thing right if you are choosing bioinformatics as a career right so uh, now these days and in, in the in the upcoming era i'm talking about next 10 to 15 years right this informatics or bioinformatics is going to be a boom literally so there is a huge gap in demand and supply we we have a huge uh, supply of like a good biologists or biotechnologists but we don't have like a good supply of any any uh, any by any biotechnologists who is having the basic even the basic understanding of the informatics so they don't have any, any uh, programming skill they don't know how to access a database they don't know how to uh, how to do the statistical test right so keeping that thing in in in, in mind right the future is is uh, i'm talking about jo job job prospective as well as the uh, making higher higher education like uh, many of them are interested in going for phd or a post doc so if you search abroad now these is also there huge demand of post docs or phds so i think bioinformatics is a future science or it is it is a future tool which will going to help in every domain agriculture environmental like uh, uh, this human genetics and it will ultimately goal of science is to is to benefit of human 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 mankind so it is going to play a vital role in that we are also currently seeing the trend of uh, machine learning gets a lot of popularity these days yeah so yeah exactly you and and um, if you if you visit my lab uh, so my my i have so my 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 main area is now machine learning deep learning and artificial intelligence and uh, i'm happy to share this information with all you guys like uh, uh, currently uh, i am in the my my lab is having a uh, uh, installation going on of two different server one is like from 22 node cluster which which has like uh, 12 tb of ram and six and six petabyte of storage capacity plus for the and you know for the artificial intelligence we so we have we have procured a, de a dedicated uh, server you know artificial intelligence need high very high uh, number of cores right so nvidia is a major player so we have just now procured this uh, nvidia dgx a100 uh, server which is which worth like 1.5 cr which is mainly going to be used for this artificial intelligence and deep learning and, and machine learning application so if 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 anything 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 if any and we are we are about to start as as my lab is very new it is like a, a 10 month old lab i joined cdfd in in last year in pandemic in may so very soon within 2 to 3 months we are going to organize the workshops also for the student so that the, the, they can have an exposure especially in in uh, genomics and machine learning so uh, no more questions then we will <clears throat> thank dr rajay for joining us today and elaborating uh, so many things about the bioinformatics tools and databases uh, hope you guys have got a glimpse of it and make use of use of this knowledge in your for further research uh, okay thank you thank you so much dr rajay for joining us today thank you so much ram thank you thank, thank you